Hey everybody, welcome to Solo Growth Part 4. Here I'm going to show you how to throw population growth into the Solo model. I'm not going to be as thorough or pedantic as I was in Parts 1 through 3. Not much really changes here. Some of our results change, which is why we do it. It's interesting. Uh, let's do some recap. Change in capital was equal to investment minus depreciation. And in a steady state, the change in capital is zero. So investment equals depreciation, which means you get that. And then if we happen to have this specific functional form, which fell from a Cobb-Douglas production function, we get that. A steady state level of capital that was a function of our savings rate and our depreciation rate, as well as the alpha from our production function. All right, so with all that stuff aside, how do we throw in population growth? Well, we're going to have the population growth rate be, just, be called N. And N is a rate just like S is a rate, just like del little delta depreciation is a rate. So our evolution of capital per worker is this. Change in capital per worker equals savings or investment, SF of K, minus, we still have depreciation, but we also have how fast our population is growing times the capital per worker. So if our population grows faster, that capital gets spread out more. So this thing can be rewritten as S F of K minus delta plus N times K. All right, so in a steady state, delta K zero, which means that S F of K equals delta plus N times K. Now with the Cobb Douglas thing we had earlier where F of K is equal to K to the alpha, you'll notice that this looks a lot like everything we had up here, except now instead of having just delta, we have delta plus N. So we're going to get the social state level of, uh, sorry, the steady state level of capital per worker is equal to S over delta plus N to the one over one minus alpha. All right, there's your steady state. So let's explore this a little bit graphically to see what happens with population growth and different steady states. We can have capital per worker up there. We can have our investment over there. Here's SF of K. And let's compare two possible population growths. We could have one that looks like this, where our depreciation plus N1 times K looks like that. And we can have a different one or depreciation plus N2 oops, times K looks like that. Now, the first thing I notice is that the red line is steeper. N2 is greater than N1. Now, N2 being steeper than N1 means N2, that red line shows higher population growth. Now, the next thing I notice is that the population with low population growth, our blue group, has a higher steady state level of capital than our population with high population growth. Now this allows different economies to have different growth rates even if they have the same technology. If you're growing faster, your steady state level of capital will be lower which means your capital, sorry, capital per worker will be lower, which means your income per worker will also be lower, because that's K to the alpha in this case. So there we have it. We introduced population growth into the solo growth model. Hope it's helpful. Good luck, guys. Happy econ.